If you've ever shot architectural photography without a tilt shift lens, you've probably noticed that to some degree, you get some vertical lines that collapse inwards if you're shooting from ground level or if you're shooting from up in a skyscraper, then everything kind of gets narrower towards the bottom. And you probably notice that, you know, horizontal lines tend to taper off to a vanishing point as well. All of this is perspective distortion. And Darktable has a module designed specifically to try and correct that problem. And that is the subject of this video. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 44 of Understanding Darktable. As I said in the intro, the perspective correction module is designed to do just that, correct for perspective distortion. Now, perspective distortion is a function of your position, or, or more specifically, your camera's position relative to the structure that you're trying to take. Now, I use architectural photography as an example because this is the area where we notice this the most. You know, buildings generally have straight lines and square angles and things like that. And if you're shooting from ground level and you're trying to shoot the corner of a two-story building, you know, you might have the very apex of the corner vertical, but you'll notice that, you know, the lines of the building running away from each corner, they collapse down to a vanishing point at the left and the right. And your ground level of your building might stretch the full width of the frame, but as you go up to the stories, you know, second story, third story, your verticals are collapsing inwards. And so that's what the perspective correction module aims to correct. So let's dive on in. I've grabbed three images, and the first one I've chosen deliberately to kind of throw Darktable a bit of a curveball. This is an outtake from our second trip to Borneo. Let me undo that because I was mucking around with that. And this is just a little, you know, roadside vendor uh, in the city of Sandakan. And, you know, the great thing about this is that it's not architecturally magnificent. <laughs> the vertical lines aren't perfectly vertical, even if they were corrected. So this will be an interesting test case. So, looking at the perspective correction module, which you will find in the corrections group, we've got four different sliders. We've got guides, automatic cropping, lens model, then we've got three automatic fit buttons, and then we've got the get structure buttons, of which there are three as well. Now, basically, the, the way to use this module is to start out with this button right here, the one which is right next to the text that says get structure. Now you can simply click on this and Darktable will analyze all of the vertical and horizontal lines that it can find within the image. Actually, it pretty much looks for any straight line and from that determines whether it's vertical or whether it's horizontal and its relevance. And its relevance is dictated by the color. Now you'll notice that when I clicked on that, we've got all these lines that have appeared over the top of the image. Basically, green lines are lines which Darktable, or, or more correctly, this module, has deemed to be verticals that are relevant to the correction algorithm. Then there are red lines, which are also deemed to be vertical, but are deemed not to be relevant to the perspective correction algorithm. Then we've got blue lines, which are horizontal lines that are deemed to be relevant and therefore should be used for calculating any correction. And then we've got yellow lines, which are also deemed to be horizontal but are not relevant to the algorithm. So basically, in your mind, you just want to be thinking about the blue lines and the green lines. The red and the yellow lines are really not relevant. The module isn't going to take them into consideration, so neither should you. Okay, so that's our starting point. But so far, nothing has happened. The reason nothing has happened is because all we've done at this point is analyze the image. We haven't actually applied any correction to it. Now, in terms of correction, 
that's these three buttons here beside automatic fit. The first one will correct for vertical distortion only. The middle one will correct for horizontal distortion only. And the third one, you guessed it, does both. So let's just correct for vertical distortion only and see what we get. So what has happened here is that Darktable has tried to make all of those lines, which have the green line superimposed over the top of them, vertical as best as it could. Now, I did say at the outset, I chose this image deliberately because I knew it would throw Darktable some curveballs, but it's still done a reasonably good job. It's done a good job of trying to make the verticals vertical. We could now click on the horizontal correction button. Actually, before we do that, I'll just hit reset. Now, you'll notice that reset doesn't get rid of the analysis. The analysis has already been done and that has been retained. If we wanted to get rid of the analysis, that's where this button comes in. Remove the structure information. Click on that and it's all gone. So if you do hit the reset on the module, you know, in every other module in Darktable, if you hit the reset button, it pretty much resets everything. This is the one exception where that doesn't happen. Uh, so yeah, click on that X if you want to remove the analysis and the colored lines that have been superimposed. Okay, let's go again. We'll reanalyze the image. Now, before we do anything else, let's just look at those other options. Control click for an additional edge enhancement. So basically, if you hold down the control key and click this button again, the module will go, oh, I obviously didn't find enough lines to begin with, and so it will go hunting for more. So control and click. Now, it's generated some more lines, but to be honest, I've never had a need to do that. I've always found that one click on the get structure button has always generated enough data for the module to go ahead and do some correction. So your mileage may vary. The next option is shift click for an additional detail enhancement. I will confess, I don't really understand what that's doing and control shift click for a combination of both methods. Like I said, I've always found that one click on the get structure button was enough. Uh, we've covered the X, that's remove the analysis. If you want to keep the analysis, but you just want to get rid of the colored lines, that's the I icon. So that will remove the lines from your image so that you can actually look at the image, but it's still retained that analysis information and you can turn it back on whenever you're ready. Okay, so we looked at vertical correction. Now let's try horizontal only. So what it's done is it's looked at all of the blue lines, the lines that it deemed to be horizontal and relevant to the algorithm, and it's tried to correct the horizontal orientation of all of those lines. Again, let's just turn those lines off and have a look. So, you know, this line along this wood here is looking pretty vertical. This line is never going to be vertical because that roof line actually goes at an angle. It's not parallel with the ground. So, you know, these lines over here are looking reasonably straight. But you know what? Let's just do a reset and we will go with the full-on correction of everything. And that is what the module believes is the best correction that it can do on this particular image. Okay, I've given Darktable enough of a headache. Let's move on to an image that's maybe a little bit more predictable. Okay, so what we've got here is another image from our holiday to Europe two years ago. This was at uh, Castello de Montjuic in uh, Barcelona. And as we can see, we've got some vertical lines, we've got some horizontal lines, we've obviously got some things that aren't quite vertical here, like this light post. So this is going to be a good test case as well. So we'll start with get structure. And sure enough, Darktable has found all of these blue lines as horizontal, these green lines as vertical. 
And let's just do a complete adjustment of both and see what it does. And that looks to me to be a pretty nice correction of that image. Now, some other things we can look at here. Guides, that will simply allow you to turn some visual guidelines on so that you can get an idea of how good a job the module has done on correcting the image. Or if you are doing your corrections manually via these four sliders, you can just use those guides as visual guides to know when you're in the ballpark. Because obviously, you know, once the corners start moving and you've got these black areas, then, you know, you can, you can lose your point of reference a little bit. So the guides are just there to help you. I'm going to turn those back off. Then we've got automatic cropping. And as the name would suggest, this will automatically crop your image so that we get rid of the black areas in the corners. And we've got two different options. Largest area will create the largest rectangle that it can based on the pixels that are still in the image. So it'll exclude those black areas from the corners. The other option is original format. Now, format in this instance refers to the aspect ratio of the original image. So if your camera shoots a 3-2 aspect ratio, then it will do a 3-2 aspect ratio crop on what's left after the correction has been applied. If your camera shoots a 4-5 aspect ratio, then it will create a 4-5 aspect ratio for you. So essentially, it's just maintaining whatever aspect ratio the original image was, but doing it after any correction has been applied. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off because I don't really need to see that. Next up, we've got lens model. Now, I've generally found that the module does a pretty good job of working all of this stuff out for itself. But if you want to take control of this, you can simply go to specific and then you will get some extra sliders to play with. Focal length, so you can you know override the focal length that's been read from the XF metadata. So if you had shot with a manual focus lens where there is no XF metadata, you might need to go in and choose a specific lens model so that you can help the module along. You know, you might have been shooting with, you know, something like my 15mm Lauer, which is manual focus, you know, so the module might not have any clue as to what the focal length was because of the lack of XF metadata. So you can then go in, set the focal length to 15mm and, you know, do, do all your corrections from there. I obviously don't want 15mm because this was shot on my A850 with my 20mm prime. You can then dial in a crop factor. So if you're working with an APS-C lens, you know, depending on which camera brand you're with, it could be a 1.5, could be 1.6 if it's Canon, etc, uh, etc. Et and then you've got aspect adjust. And this will allow you to widen or constrict the vertical information within the image. I'm not sure why you would want to do that. Again, might come down to working with some weird lenses. Uh, I've not had a need to go anywhere near any of this stuff. In fact, I've never actually gone in and chosen a specific lens correction. I've always just left it on generic and the module's always done a pretty good job. Okay, so that's the basics. You will notice that there are a few different control click and shift click options here. Uh, with the vertical correction, we can control click to only fix the rotation or shift click to only fit the lens shift. We can then have a look at the horizontal only. Again, we've got control click to only fit rotation or shift click to only fit the lens shift. And then with the complete correction, this will automatically correct for vertical and horizontal perspective distortions, fitting rotation, lens shift in both directions, and shear. So, rotation is that way, left and right. Vertical, we've discussed. Horizontal, we've discussed, which is sort of vanishing off to you know, vanishing points on the horizons, like so. 
And then shear refers to this angle, whether you were square on to the subject that you were shooting. So this button is going to correct for all of those things, but you can do control click to only fit for rotation or shift click to only fix for lens shift. So that's the vertical correction and the horizontal co correction or control shift click to only fit rotation and lens shift. So basically all three of those modifier options, control click, shift click, and control shift click, will ignore the shear, right? So whether or not you were square to the, the subject. Let's just go back to the automatic crop. We'll go largest area, close the module, and now we've got our cropped and corrected image. Okay, those are the basics of perspective correction. I think I've covered everything other than manual correction. A manual correction, you can simply go in and grab these sliders and, you know, move them to adjust exactly what you want to adjust. Now, sometimes you might find that if it's quite an extreme angle that you shot from and the either the horizontal distortion or the vertical distortion is really extreme, then you, you might find that what the module deems as corrected is a little bit too much. And so you can then come back in and go, oh, that vertical correction's a bit too much for my liking, so I'm just going to, you know, back that off a little bit. You know, so you can do things like this. It all comes down to the image that you're working on, obviously. Uh, so I will just go back to the automatic correction. I'm happy with that and I'll close the module. Okay, so that is pretty much it for the perspective correction module. Uh, it is a nice tool and it really makes very short work of having to correct that stuff. I will quite often override the automatic because sometimes it just crops too much. Because that's the other thing, that's one thing I haven't talked about is the fact that if you do have an image where you know, it was a really short focal length because the shorter the focal length, the greater these distortions will be. The automatic correction by this module might create massive distortions to the point where you actually have to crop too much of the image in order to get a rectangular crop. And, you know, sometimes you, you just have to go, well... I'll tolerate a little bit more distortion just so that I can have a bit more of the pixel data left inside the rectangle of the crop. So, yeah. Okay, that's pretty much it, people. Uh, I did want to say, sorry for the long drought. I know it's been a couple of weeks since I last got a, a video recorded. It's just been busy with work and... Um, this may very well be the last video that I get out before Kath and I go on holiday. We're heading off to Sri Lanka uh, in a couple of weeks' time. Really looking forward to that. Uh, Going to have three weeks in, well, two weeks in Sri Lanka and a few days in the Maldives at the end of it. Just kick them back on the beach. Uh, looking forward to it. It's going to be nice. So there probably won't be another video after this for probably the best part of a month so uh, apologies in advance for that uh anything else to address i don't think so i think that's pretty much it uh once again thank you to all of my subscribers on youtube and a massive thanks to those people who are supporting me on patreon uh, your support is always appreciated uh, and to anyone who has not thought about supporting me on patreon um give it some thought you don't have to spend a fortune, you know, a couple of bucks a month, and you will get extra video content that I don't publish to YouTube. So uh, some of these module-specific videos, I'll go into even greater depth or I'll, you know, demonstrate with other images. So there's bits of extra bonus content for Patreon supporters. So I will leave it with that and... 
If I don't speak to you again before I go on holiday, I will see you post-Sri Lanka, or you'll see me post-Sri Lanka, and I'll uh, talk to you in the next one.